Here's a Linux server that's running a version of the kernel that's affected by a CVE that's being actively exploited in the wild. I should definitely consider patching the server right now, but kernel updates often require a reboot. And let's just say that for some reason I'm unable to get approval from management for the maintenance window that would be required for such a reboot, and as a result of that, maybe this maintenance has to wait until the weekend. So what's a Linux admin to do in a situation like this? Now one solution that we might consider for implementing something to rectify this solution is Kernel Care Enterprise. Kernel Care Enterprise, or KCE for short, is a live patching solution and with it, we can actually benefit from a kernel patch right now and, well, reboot later. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set it up. Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to set up Kernel Care Enterprise, which is a live patching solution from TuxCare. Now, if you haven't already heard of Kernel Care Enterprise or KCE for short, what it is is a live patching solution and what it allows you to do is benefit from kernel patches right now without having to reboot your entire server. And this is a great solution for situations in which there's an important CVE that's impacting Linux servers right now but for some reason or another, you can't get a maintenance window approved to use for the reboot that would ultimately be required after installing such an update. With KCE, you could patch right now and reboot later. And actually, KCE is able to live patch more than just the kernel, but I'll touch on that later. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you guys how to set it up. Now, before we get started though, there's a quick disclaimer that I need to give you guys, and that is the fact that TuxCare, the makers of Kernel Care Enterprise, is sponsoring today's video. But even though they're sponsoring today's video, it was my idea to do this video. I actually did a video regarding kernel care some time back, and I figured it was time to create an updated video, so I approached Tux Care with the idea of doing an updated tutorial, and they were all about the idea. But given the fact that they're sponsoring today's video, I just want to make it clear this is not a review, this is a tutorial. The goal today is to show you what kernel care enterprise is, and also show you how to set it up, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. In addition to that, I'll have time codes in the description down below, so that way you can get right to the section that most interests you. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into Kernel Care Enterprise. So first of all, what exactly is Kernel Care Enterprise? Well, I did mention earlier that Kernel Care Enterprise, or KCE, is a live patching solution, so let's start there. As I'm sure most of you are aware, installing all available security patches when they're made available is a key component when it comes to securing your Linux servers. Many patches require a service to be restarted, while some even end up requiring a full system reboot. And often, the reason why a reboot is required comes down to kernel updates. The Linux kernel is the most important part of the software side of your Linux server because it handles all critical I.O. operations. So when the kernel itself gets updated, you'll normally have to reboot the entire server, because the updated kernel typically won't be loaded until the next boot cycle. Now live patching, in regard to the kernel itself, is the ability to patch a kernel while it's running. And live patching itself isn't specific to Kernel Care Enterprise, it's actually a feature that was introduced into the Linux kernel itself ever since version 4.0. And this built-in kernel feature is known as kpatch. This feature literally allows you to implement a kernel patch without rebooting the system. So when it comes to benefiting from a security patch to the Linux kernel itself, with live patching, you could take advantage of such a patch immediately. But what about uptime? I mean, isn't it just so cool to have a Linux server that's been running for a very long time? Well, yeah, it's very cool, but that's also not the point. And honestly, it's just not something to brag about. I mean, sure, it is something to brag about when it comes to the stability of Linux itself. I mean, it's a platform that enables you to have uptime like that. But I just want to make sure that I underscore the fact that a server that has not been rebooted is a vulnerable server. A server that threat actors would just love to get a hold of. But earlier I mentioned that, well, the whole point of live patching is to benefit from a kernel patch without having to reboot your server. And yeah, that actually is the benefit, but I don't want you guys to think that your server can just be left on all the time without a reboot. What live patching enables you to do is reboot on your terms, so that way you could benefit from the security patch right now and reboot later. Now I still recommend that you do reboot eventually, but if a maintenance window isn't going to come around for a long time and there's a vulnerability that 
threat actors are actively exploiting, then you'll definitely want to benefit from that security patch right now and not wait, which is exactly what solutions like Kernel Care Enterprise enable you to do. But one issue with live patching is that while it's a built-in feature when it comes to the Linux kernel itself, it doesn't have a built-in delivery mechanism. You still need a team of developers to develop a patch and some sort of service to make the patches available to you. Many of the popular enterprise Linux distributions will offer you a subscription service that will hook right into kpatch and facilitate the ability to live patch the kernel. But for a typical company that utilizes Linux servers, the majority of them use multiple distributions. As a result, this might mean that you could be paying multiple companies for the same feature. And this is where we get to Kernel Care Enterprise. Kernel Care Enterprise is one service you could pay for that supports multiple Linux distributions. For example, if you are primarily a Debian shop, but you have a few Ubuntu LTS servers, then you're covered. If you have an Alma Linux server as well, then no problem. In fact, KCE supports 5,000 different Linux distribution and Linux kernel combinations. So if you're using a supported Linux distribution and they actually support quite a few distros, then you're covered. Now, if you want to check out whether or not your distribution of choice is supported by Kernel Care Enterprise, then what you could do is go to the following website. The URL is patches.kernelcare.com. In addition to that, KCE is able to live patch more than just the Linux kernel, as there's options available for databases, QEMU, and shared libraries as well. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus on kernel live patching. I just wanted to mention that those solutions exist, although the focus today, like I mentioned, is on the kernel. Since kpatch is built right into the Linux kernel, that's awesome. That means if you're running a modern Linux distribution with an up-to-date kernel, then you have kpatch available. However, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that kernel care and kpatch are not the same thing. Sure, they both aim to solve the same goal, but the thing is, they do it differently. Now, I mentioned kpatch just to inform you guys that it is a thing that exists and it's the closest comparison that we have. But again, kernel care enterprise is its own technology. Now, another key difference between Kernel Care Enterprise and live patching services provided by the distributions themselves is that distros will often bundle a support agreement with their live patching service. And having a support agreement isn't actually a bad thing. It could be a great thing. But what if you don't need a support agreement? Maybe you have your very own IT team that is more than capable and they just handle everything for you. In that case, if you are forced to buy a support agreement along with the distribution specific live patching service, and technically, you're paying for something that you don't plan on using. When it comes to KCE, there are support agreements available, but it's an optional service. If live patching is all you need, then you can actually purchase just the live patching. But how much does it cost? Well, when it comes to pricing, KCE costs $59.50 per year per server. And that's just the cost for live patching the Linux kernel itself. There's other solutions that they offer that fall outside of the scope of this video. For example, in addition to live patching, they have plans to support end-of-life programming languages. And not only that, they also have a solution available that's able to patch shared libraries as well. Now, I'm not going to be going over those other services in this video, but if you're looking for some additional support, you could compare their products with others and make a decision for your servers and organization. But anyway, now that we've defined what Kernel Care Enterprise is, in the next section, what we're going to do is take a look at how to set it up. So let's take a look at installing KCE. Before we do install KCE, we should first check and see whether or not our system is compatible. If you already know that it is, for example, if you check the patches page that I mentioned earlier, then you could safely skip this step. But otherwise, you could run the following command to test the compatibility of your server with KCE. And that command is curl s uppercase L and then https colon slash slash kernelcare.com slash checker, and then you pipe that into Python. Now the thing is though, when it comes to running scripts from the internet, I always recommend that you check it first before you just go ahead and run it. Now obviously I checked this before I hit the record button, so I know that it's safe, but don't just take my word for it or anyone else's for that matter. As a Linux administrator, it's a really good idea to check these scripts before you actually run them on your server. Assuming that your server is compatible, what you'll need is an account on the Kernel Care Enterprise website to use the service. Now on my end, I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that to provide you in this video because again, this is a tutorial, not a review. And I also make zero affiliate income from any of the kernel care links that you might find in the description down below. 
But what I will do is show a URL on the screen right now, and you can visit that URL to set up your very own account with Kernel Care Enterprise. But once you do have an account set up, then installing Kernel Care Enterprise is very easy. You could do so by running curl s uppercase l https colon slash slash kernelcare.com slash installer, and then we're going to pipe that into Bash. Now, if your account with Kernel Care Enterprise features IP based licensing, and if so, you'd already know that that was the case, then that's it. You're done. But if your account was given a license key, which would be the majority of you, then the next step is to register the service with your account. And to do so, what you'll do is run slash user slash bin slash kcarectl with the option dash dash register. And after you run that, then later on, your server will check in by default every four hours. And if any patches are available for your Linux kernel that are supported by the platform, then it's going to go ahead and get those installed for you. Now, once you actually complete registration, then kcarectl will reach out and download any patches that might be available for your kernel. Now, just in case you might need this command later, if you are planning on replacing or decommissioning a server, you can unregister kernel care with the following command. And that command is slash user slash bin slash kcarectl dash dash unregister. So if nothing else, you could add that command to your notes in case you need it later. Anyway, in order to determine whether or not any patches have been applied to your kernel, you can run the following command to find out. And that command is slash user slash bin slash kcarectl with the option dash dash info. Most likely, the output of the command will tell you that no patches are currently applied. The thing is, KCE will automatically check into the service in the background and download any available patches if any are available for your kernel. But it could take a few hours for it to check in for the first time, which is why you're probably going to see that no patches are applied as soon as you run this for the very first time. But if you'd rather not wait, what you could do is apply any patches that might be available right now by running the following command. And that command is slash user slash bin slash kcarectl dash dash update. Now, earlier in the video, I showed you guys a Linux server that unfortunately is vulnerable to a CVE that's being actively exploited. That server in particular was a fresh installation of Ubuntu without any updates applied at all. So I used that server as an example of a server that's fully exploitable. I mean, not even one update has been installed yet. So as a result of that, there's going to be a number of vulnerabilities that that particular server is vulnerable to. But I wanted to use that as an example to show you a server that's vulnerable. So that way we can compare it after I install Kernel Care Enterprise and see what the difference is after I get that installed. So let's return to that server and see what it looks like after Kernel Care Enterprise has been installed. And here it is. Here's the same output from earlier in the video. As you can see, this server is definitely vulnerable. So let's install KCE and we'll check the server again. I'll just run the same command that I gave you guys earlier. And now that's all set. Now I mentioned earlier that it could take up to four hours for the server to check in for the very first time. So I'll use the same command that I gave you guys earlier to force that along. And now that's done. And now let's see if it's still vulnerable. So as you can see, the server has now been patched. How cool is that? Now, if your organization uses any third party utility for scanning for vulnerabilities, there is something very important you'll want to keep in mind. And that is that the reporting might not be accurate, at least not by default, if you patch your systems with Kernel Care Enterprise. And the reason for this is that many of these utilities just check the kernel version and that's about it. They're not going to take into account the fact that you may have live patching set up. But the thing is, KCE works a little bit differently. It doesn't change the version number of the kernel that you have installed, it's just live patching it. So the version number will still be exactly the same. However, to rectify this issue, KCE can actually be integrated right into these utilities. So if you use any third-party scanning utilities, you'll definitely want to check for this particular integration, which will actually make the reports, well, accurate. Anyway, in this video, I showed you guys what Kernel Care Enterprise is, as well as how to install it. I gave you commands for installing Kernel Care Enterprise itself, updating it, registering it, and also how to unregister it. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys, and definitely let me know in the comments what you thought about this particular video. But again, Kernel Care Enterprise is something that I've been using for a long time, and I wanted to show you guys how it works, and, well, I've done that. If you found this video helpful, then please consider clicking that like button to let YouTube know that you found this helpful, because who knows? 
Maybe someone else might be able to benefit from this particular video. And if nothing else, well, if you click the like button, that might mean that we'll see more Linux content on YouTube, and I would really appreciate that. Anyway, I have some really awesome content coming for you guys really soon, so be sure that you're subscribed to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.